Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be sitting here about to play with some makeup. I'm gonna do a quick, well, I don't know how quick it's gonna be, but it's gonna be a get ready with me. And I haven't done one of these in so long. I was not planning on filming this today, but someone commented on my last video and said, you should do a get ready with me. And I thought, wow, I would truly love nothing more um, because I have been, Playing around with makeup more now that my room's all finished. I feel like I have this designated area to sit and play. So I thought I would get ready with you guys or you would get ready with me or and show you guys how I've been doing my makeup lately, what products I've been using because I've really been kind of keeping it pretty consistent and doing kind of the same thing. Yeah, so let's just get into it. I'm gonna also do my hair. It's washed and blow dried, but I'm gonna kind of clip it out of the way for now so that we can just get right into the the face. So the first thing I've been using for my skin is not a foundation. It is this product here, which is by Color Science. It's the Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. It's SPF 50. Um, this isn't really a tinted moisturizer or a foundation, but I've been using it as one um, you know, I already use a sunscreen, but I feel like this is just giving me an extra protection and it also gives me a really nice glow. Um, it really doesn't have much coverage at all, um, but it does have like a peachy tint to it. I'll show you. Um, but, and so this is what they call a universal shade. Now, obviously that color does not look like that would suit most people, but because it doesn't really have coverage, it's not really um, gonna go on like a foundation. Um, it's mostly just has like a peachy tint to it to give you more of a glow. Um, and I think it's mostly also to counteract the white cast that sunscreens leave. Um, so with that being said, I really do think that this really could work for even deeper skin tones because it doesn't give you that white cast and it just has like a little warm glow to it. Yeah, so I've just been really loving this. I feel like it just like kind of evens up my skin tone ever so slightly without providing any coverage. Um, you know, we're, we're all working from home, we're wearing masks, foundation just is like not it for me right now. As you can see, I just like look the same. It just gives me a little oomph and uh, that extra sun protection. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go in with a concealer, an old classic. This is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I'm in the shade Vanilla. You guys, this, this concealer is so old, it's kind of disgusting, but I hadn't picked it up in a really long time and then I started using it again lately and I'm like, Sometimes it's nice to get back to the basics. Um, so I'm just gonna cover up. I woke up with like a little hive. I don't know what that's about. I do get some redness on my chin, so I just like to kind of tap that in, cover up any veins, um, and then, of course, the under eye. And I just tap that in with my finger. I never, ever like using a brush under my eye. I don't know how some people do it, I see it be done and it looks good on me. It just like wipes the product away and then it leaves like brush strokes. So I don't know. I just always use my finger. It just gives the best application. And boom, done. This is like all I've been doing to my skin lately. So, so simple. Um, obviously we're gonna go in with blush and bronzer um, in a little bit, but, but that's it. That's all I've been doing with my skin. So brows my tried and true um, boy brow, which I need a new one of this. I'm like scraping the inside, but I always um, comb it in the opposite direction and then brush it up. And I just feel like that gives me the most fluff and product. Okay, brows are done. Um, so for the eyes, I've been loving my Glossier Sky Wash in Palm, it's my favorite of the sky washes. I wear it all the time. It's just like a really sheer, light, peachy brown. And um, I just really love it. 
I feel like it just gives like a really subtle color. This is what I wear when I don't really want to look like I'm wearing much makeup or eyeshadow. Um, it just feels like very casual, very like, oh, I, I don't even try, but somehow I just look great. Um, so if you're fair skin, this one's great. If you have a deeper skin tone, um, their shade in Echo should give you the same result. Just a little like my eyelids, but better. Sorry, I keep looking over here. This is my newer camera and it, the viewfinder's on the side and I just keep checking to make sure I'm in the frame. Give me some time to get used to. So, this is where I get a little crazy. I've been wearing liquid liner. I haven't worn liquid liner in a long time, but I like, I don't know, I just woke up one day and I was like, I need a wing. And I did it and so, and I just felt really pretty. And so I've been wearing it. <laughs> but just in a very like kind of subtle way, in my opinion. Um, so I, my favorite one is the Glossier Pro Tip. I love it. It like, you guys, this one's old too. I need, I shouldn't be using old makeup, but like, are we really throwing out our makeup when it's old? I don't think so. So I have hooded lids. They're not the most hooded, but if I look kind of straight on without doing my like camera face or mirror face when I'm like, I kind of like raise my eyebrows, this is what my eyes look like. So as you can see, they're they're a little bit more hooded, um, not fully, but just hooded enough that liquid liner just didn't always work for me. It just didn't, you know, when our goal, I feel like when we do liquid liners to like elongate the eye, give it that almond shape, that very like sexy cat eye. Um, but for me, it always kind of just did not look that way. So Katie Jane Hughes has this trick that has been great for me. Um, which is for hooded eyes and it's to look straight ahead instead of like, you know, we do the liner like this and you open your eye and it kind of disappears or the shape changes. She looks straight ahead. I'm going to try and do this for you guys to see. Honestly, check out her Instagram. I think she has it in a highlights on her, um, Instagram. So she does it, explains it in a much better way, but I'm going to try and show you what I'm doing. Okay. So I look straight ahead and I just do the wing and it's going to like kind of crease because I'm not stretching my eye. So I'm just going to create like the little wing here and it kind of skips a little bit. So you just kind of have to have a steady hand, but look, see when I close my eyes, it looks kind of crazy. When I open them, it's the exact shape I want. So I'm just kind of filling that in. And then for me, if you already have almond shaped eyes, then taking the eyeliner all the way in is gonna look great. But for someone like me who has a more hooded eye and not just that, but my eyes kind of downturn at the ends a little bit, um, I find that taking it all the way in just kind of drags them down even more. So to create that like faux almond shape, I don't take the liner all the way in. I take it like, let's see, to the like, you know, the outer edge, the iris here. I take it to like the end of it. So, and I just kind of like fade it into the rest. Can you guys see that? Here's what it's looking like. So my eyes open and you can see it gave that like really cute, like little baby cat eye and it elongated my eye, but when I close it, it kind of looks skippy, right? So while keeping the shape, don't alter the shape because that's, if I like drag it all the way in, when I open it, it's gonna do that like dippy thing. So I keep the shape of it, but I just fill in those like little patches just so that when I'm, you know, blinking or closing my eyes, it doesn't look too crazy. Okay, so let me show you. So it looks like this, and then when I close my eyes, it looks like this. And I'll try and zoom in here so you can see what I mean. It's a little skippy just because I was trying to explain what I was doing and the eyeliner was kind of drying, but that's okay. Um, but you can see it kind of has that like swoop. It goes like swoop and then out. It looks great. Genius. She's a genius. 
So something I learned when I started doing my eyeliner like this is this high. I mean, this high is this eye is way more hooded than this one, which I never would have known just by looking at them. But as you can see, this one like curves up way more. That's okay. I don't really care. Okay, so both eyes are done. So eyes open looks good, right? Eyes closed looks a little crazy. And you can see that this one has way more of that like little hook because of my one hooded eye, but you like barely see it when you're blinking. And honestly, it just kind of looks like a funky new way of doing your eyeliner. So I don't really care. I love it. I'm gonna just curl my lashes. So that's all I've been doing for the eyes lately. I just feel like it's just enough where I don't look like I just like spent a lot of time on my makeup, which I didn't. Um, but you know, it's like a little bit sultry because it's all about the eyes lately, right? Because we're wearing our masks. Okay, so this mascara I've been using, this is a funny story. This is by Vivian Sabo Cabaret Premier. You can get this off of Amazon. It's not expensive and it's a great mascara. So kind of an embarrassing pastime I've been doing lately as I'm like trying to fall asleep is I just like look at BuzzFeed. Like I read like BuzzFeed articles or like take those stupid BuzzFeed quizzes. I think because it like doesn't require too much stimulation in my brain. And you know how they have those articles that's like 15 things from Amazon you didn't know you needed, you know, or like things like that where it's like clearly a very, it's clearly a money grab. They're making commission from it. It's not a secret. But even knowing that, I still, every time I'm like, well, yes, I would like to know what I need. So in one of those that I saw, it was like this mascara on Amazon is getting like such good reviews. It's the best, blah, blah, blah. So I clicked on the reviews, I was reading them, it's true. There's people that are like obsessed with this mascara. So naturally I was very curious, but I'm also like, I'm not spending money right now, so I'm not getting it. But I was organizing my PR makeup the other day. It always is kind of a mess. And then I, I'm not really sure what I have used or what I still need to use and what's coming in, whatever. So I was organizing it so that I can kind of prioritize which things I'm gonna try out. And look what was in there. Didn't even know. Anyway, so I was so excited, I squealed, and I've been using it for the past week, and it is really good. It has, the brush kind of reminds me of the Glossier in that it's not exactly the same shape, but it's a smaller silicone uh, bristle, which I tend to like because it does really good separation, but the formula is totally different, and I've just been really loving it. Like, it really gives you nice full lashes. So the hype is, is real. I also really like that you can like build it up. I like mascaras where the, it just gets like thicker and doesn't dry immediately, you know what I mean? But on the bottom, I always have to use my Glossier because I just, I talked about in my last vlog that I have this like tick where I, I don't wanna do it now because I'm gonna get makeup all over me, but I scrunch my eyes shut. And um, I do it more as the day goes on because like uh, it's kind of triggered by like stress or just fatigue. And so as the day goes on, I like do it more and then all my mascara ends up under my eyes. So this one I just find does it less because it's a tubing mascara. But yeah, those are the eyes. Super quick, I can usually do it in like five minutes. So for the face, I'm gonna, I haven't really been using bronzer a lot, but I kind of want to today. So I just grabbed the closest bronzer I had, which is this Lila B bronzer in B Sunkissed. Beautiful packaging. It's like very heavy and gorgeous and it like slides out like this. So fancy. Has two different shades. I'm just gonna mix them together. I've been watching a lot of like TikTok. <laughs> I mean, you guys know, and we've all been doing it, right? Um, anyway, I love finding like makeup artists, like professional makeup artists on there, or just people that are like, this is how I do my makeup. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to try that. Um, so I just watched this like makeup artist yesterday do some like bronzer in like not the normal way. I mean, I don't want to say not the normal way. Everyone does their makeup different, but he just kind of like dusted it across the face here and like a little bit on the forehead. Pretty subtle. Okay, 
but this is what I'm really excited to show you. So I saw someone do their blush this way on TikTok and I tried it and it's kind of life changing. So I just grabbed a powder blush. Normally I'm a cream blush gal, but for this I he they used a powder and so I used a powder and so I don't know how to do it with cream yet, but um, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Love Glow blush. So normally, and I feel like most of us were taught to put the blush on the apples of the cheeks, right? Um, but when you'd smile and do that, what happens is you unsmile and that color drops. So it can kind of pull the uh, face down a little bit, which we don't want. So they said that the best blush technique is from the 80s and he would put it on the temples and then brushed it inwards and he said never go beyond the eye the middle of the eye um which i was like this seems crazy why would you put your blush here but you guys i couldn't stop staring at myself all day it really i kind of want to do a lot just because <laughs> I'm crazy like that. Uh, look. It just like, it lifts my face. I was staring at myself in the mirror all day. I love it. I don't know. Maybe I'll never go back. I'm sure you could do this with cream blush, but I just haven't tried it yet, so. And then he did like a little bit on the nose forehead and chin, I guess, just to like give a little flush. You guys, I feel so pretty and like lifted. And so what I've been doing to like keep that is taking my favorite highlighter to use ever. I don't even know if it's technically a highlighter, but it's the Charlotte Tilbury, Hi uh, sorry, Hollywood Flawless Filter. I use the shade two. It's just amazing. And so normally I would put highlighter like right here on the cheekbones, right? And so I've been just, no one taught me how to do this. I've just been doing it. It's reminding me of that TikTok that's like, now you're not supposed to do this, but this is what I do. Um, anyway, I put it like right above that, almost like under my eye. And I just tap it right there. And I feel like, like it's like, it doesn't hit this, the light here. It kind of hits it up here, which I feel like, continues to bring my face up I don't know I just like it that's what I've been doing love okay for lips now lips aren't that important because we're wearing a mask but I'm gonna do one anyway um I've rediscovered my love for this lip liner and it's the Lancome natural mauve it's like for me my perfect nude i'm just gonna give it a little sharpen it's just like the exact kind of nude i always want which is like a brownie pink and then an old fave that i've been back into is glossier generation g in cake in my opinion this is the best generation g lip color it's so pretty it's like peachy brownie nude, but they're sheer. They don't like deposit a ton of color, which I don't really like. Um, I don't like a ton of color in my lips. I always feel like too done up or something, which is just something I've not been into for myself. Gorgeous. And that could I could stop there, but I've been really loving this Tower 28 lip gloss in the shade Coconut. A really pretty pink and so I've just been putting it like right in the middle just for a little juicy but yeah now we're gonna move on to the hair I'm really excited to do the hair because I got a new curling iron if you watched my last vlog you know all about it it's the t3 single pass one inch um, this is not sponsored. It wasn't sent to me. I bought this with my own money. Um, I did buy it during Black Friday, so it was on sale. I've had my eye on that for so long, but 
didn't want to take the plunge, but I finally did and I'm so glad. I just, I, I'm, it's just such a joy to use and I feel like it makes my hair look really good. And I'm gonna do my hair in two sections. So I'm just gonna clip off the top. Okay, I wanna try something a little bit different. So normally I curl my hair all back, like all the curls go towards the back. But lately, since I got this curling iron, I've been um, alternating. So like this one goes back, this one goes forward. And um, I really like that. But I feel like I really like the front pieces to go back. So I think I'm gonna like do these two sections towards the back and then start, start alternating like behind the ear. Um, okay, we're all ready to go. So this is what I've been doing. I kind of start halfway and then just twist it around, hold it for a sec, pull it out. And when you pull it out, kind of straighten it, like pull at the ends. And I don't know, it gives you that more like undone look, I think. All right, so I'm gonna do, normally I alternate, but I'm gonna do this one towards the back also. Um, I love this iron. My last one was like ripping out. <laughs> It gets really hot, be careful. My last one was like ripping out my hair, like I couldn't even curl it the way I'm doing, like without ripping out all of my hair. So now I'm gonna hold the iron different and curl it in. You don't need to hold it long at all. Just give a little bit of a bend. All right, so I don't like mess it up yet because I want the curls to cool so that it lasts longer. But I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side. Okay, so now I'm gonna take down the top layer, part my hair in the back, and do the exact same thing to the top layer. I'm gonna keep my bangs out of it to the end. I'm gonna take this front piece, do it away from the face. Ah! Close call. I'm gonna do the second piece also away from the face. And now I'm going to start alternating. And same thing on the other side. And if you ever feel like it's too curled while it's still hot, I just kind of flatten it, like pull the curl so that it just kind of loosens up a bit and then you'll usually be okay. Okay, so then for the bangs, I like to go back and I barely do anything, but always away from the face, I just kind of give like a little something um, just so that they're not like straight. Just give like, almost like immediately pull them through. Just like a little swoopy. So now I go through and break apart all of the curls. Just like that. And then it's just like, kind of like a subtle beachy, but like, smooth wave. And then I'm just gonna do a little dry shampoo at the roots, even though my hair is clean. It's mostly just to like give it a little bit of texture and like volume. And then I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of oil. This is the Way Rose Body Oil. And just smooth just the ends, just a tiny, tiny bit, just so that just so that they look kind of like shiny and smooth. 
And that's it. That's how I've been getting ready um, for nothing at all because we're on lockdown. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it just helps me to like feel pretty and feel like a whole person to like do my hair and makeup and get dressed and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I hope you guys like the look. Let me know what you think and I will see you in my next video.